Hello everyone, going to do a book review, going to be reviewing the 1979 novel Ghost Story by Peter Straub. This novel was included on Stephen King's suggested reading list in at the end of um, Dance Macabre. Um, King also spends a part of the book uh, talking about or writing about his admiration for Ghost Story and Peter Straub. King and Straub, of course, would later collaborate on some novels. They would write um, The Talisman, which paperback of that right here in 1984, I believe that came out. And they would write a sequel, Black House, which came out, I believe, in the early 2000s at, at some point. So, so the two of them were linked throughout their careers. Which is interesting because both were different writers. I mean, both certainly worked within the horror genre, but their styles were much different. Um, King wrote in a more um, plain style, I guess we might say. I might say a more plain spoken style, um, a more direct style, a pulpy style at times. Although King's more versatile than I than he's often given credit for. And Strobe, Peter Straub wrote more refined prose. It was, his background was a, a lot different than King's. Strobe went to, was a literature major, and, and he studied literature at the graduate level as well. Um, studied to get a PhD. So, and, and his, whereas King's influences were more from the pulpit writers, you know, that he talks about in Dance Macabre. Straub's more drawing upon writers like Henry James and Edith Wharton, turn of the century writers known for their refined prose, but also Edgar Allan Poe and H.P. Lovecraft and, and that horror tradition. So Straub's prose is much different than King's. I mean, it, it, you can tell it, it is in that kind of uh, Henry James style of very precise language that that he employs throughout. So it's an interesting contrast in styles between the two writers. And yet they were good friends and even collaborated on, on some projects. But anyway, I want to talk about Ghost Story, which... Which is, where to begin with this one? I guess I'll just talk about the plot a little bit. It's a 500-page novel, over 500 pages, which is fairly long for a horror novel. Might even call it an epic novel because it does have that quality to it. But it's set in the present day, mostly takes place in this town of Midland, New York. Make sure I got the name right. Milburn, Milburn, New York, which I believe is fictional, a town in upstate New York, and the full and the plot revolves around the Chowder Society, which is this group of five men who get together once a month and tell each other ghost stories. Now these five men, they're all, you know, at the top of the pecking order in Milburn. One's a lawyer. One. One owns businesses, one's a doctor. So like any mid-sized town, you know, they're, they're sort of the ones who command respect and have influence within the town. So that's the starting point of, of the story. And what happens is strange things begin to happen to these men. They're all around 70 years of age. And they all have secrets they, that they, the four of them know. But you know, they have, they've all had carrying a lot inside throughout throughout their lives, and the novel gets into that. Also, they start to die mysteriously. One member dies under mysterious circumstances, and the rest, the survivors, begin to notice things are strange. Things are afoot. In, in their town. And that's that's 
basically where the story goes from there. I don't want to reveal too much. There's so much plot in this book, but Straub, Peter Straub handles it in a, in a um, graceful way where, where you never feel like you're losing track of certain plot points and has a way of um, holding, holding it all together. I guess if there is a protagonist, you have the Chowder Society, and there's also a character named Don, who's a horror writer, and he's a, actually a nephew of one of the one of the members of the society. And Don comes back to Mid Milford and gets involved in in their um, supernatural investigations that are that are going on. That's basically the plot, uh, kind of sets up the plot of the story. Uh, the themes, it's rich with themes, this one. It's really drawing upon gothic tr traditions, horror traditions. It's really a portrait of this town, mid-sized town. And Straub even said that S S King Salem's Lot was actually an influence on the Salem's Lot was published in 1975. Ghost story a few years later. And if you know Salem's Lot, it's set in um, Jerusalem's, Jer Jerusalem's Lot. And it's about a small town that is invaded by Dracula, or sort of a modern day Dracula, but is also about the, the rot of kind of American values in society in, in the 1970s. And Milford, New York is very much like the town in Salem's Lot. Maybe it's a little bit bigger, but you really get a portrait of this town. There's a lot of minor characters who appear who are people in this town. And we, look, we, we get a sense of um, a town that on the surface, kind of a, not a cliche, but a town that on the surface that looks very Americana, very um, classic, but of course, harbors a lot of secrets and and has um, a lot of um, skeletons in a lot of skeletons in in the town's history, which the book gets into. I guess the big difference between Salem's Lot and Ghost Story, Salem's Lot's more cinematic in its approach, whereas it almost has the feel of like like a Roger Corman movie from the '60s. If Roger Corman had made an epic vampire film set in a small town whereas ghost story is more literary in its approach and and that kind of goes to the the critical why king when he was an up and coming writer was really seen as a menace by the the critical establishment and and academics as well who didn't care for kings um, growing influence on American literature. But Straub was very much a critical darling. You know, critics liked his work. They, you know, like I said, his prose was literary. You know, he wrote what today we talk about, let's talk about literary fiction. I, I mean, I guess you could file his books more, more into that category. King, more in writing a different kind of popular a popular fiction so that's kind of where the two the two um defer and how ghost story um defers as well it really gives you a rich tapestry of of this town and what's what's happening in this town and it becomes clear that supernatural forces are at work there's actually not a lot of like horror elements in it. Straub is very economical as far as how he puts in scare moments. And I mean, a lot of variations of horror are in this book. I mean, there's werewolves and there's vampires, zombies, ghosts, of course. There's a little bit of everything. And and not to maybe a, a minor spoiler that it shape shifting as well plays a, a big role in the story. And what I like about it, what really worked besides the great portrait of this town is it really got 
made me anyway think about the supernatural, not just why people believe in ghosts or why people do do that, but but more in the sense of making you think about not just why people believe in supernatural things, but also how easy it is would be to hide supernatural things. Like he really does a good job of making the story as realistic as possible. Just totally dedicated to, to realism. And when the more supernatural stuff happens, it, it feels almost natural. Okay. And it almost kind of puts you in the mindset as a reader that, Oh, you know, there are things happen all the time that are unexplained and and this book gives some possibilities for that but but it, it, you know it really handles it in a very um, adept way adept way as far as handling the supernatural some of the themes in the book i mean there's it's really psychological horror you know it's sociological there's a lot of sociological things happening in the book but also psychological i mean it's very freudian however you feel about freudian psychology but it's it's very much um there in the story in the sense that most of the main characters are male there's a few female characters but it's really a more of a male focused story and a lot of the supernatural things that happen are projections of the anxieties of the characters, the, these men who the, the horror that they experience, it's sort of, it's their subconscious and, and their, their um, fear of, of women, fear of sexuality, um, their questions about their masculinity, you know, all these really deep rooted questions and the supernatural forces seem to be an embodiment of all their, their fears surrounding these very Freudian things. And, and the supernatural forces in the novel are almost, not all, but almost all female take, take a, a female form. And once again, it's not, I don't think it's like Straub is demonizing women in any way. He's putting us in the mindset of these characters who in some ways maybe hold some, hold some misogyny and, and um, are um, a little uh, messed up when it comes to, to relationships and, and marriage and, and things like that. And, and there's so much of that in the book, in this town of, infidelity is a big theme in, in the book and and even with the minor characters we learn about the town it seems like all the middle-aged men in this town are, are thinking about affairs or they're at least obsessed with the idea of having an affair and kind of a, an odd dynamic there and all these infatuations these these middle-aged men um get into and Gets them, gets them into trouble. So, so it's really heavy on those those Freudian psychological themes, which which work work quite well in the story. Like I said, it's you know it's Americana. I mean, it's it's very much drawing upon American literature. Like Hawthorne is another big influence, and kind of like the remnants of. Puritan culture and, and these old American towns and how neurotic they are and how, how um, the ghosts of history are, are, are just forever um, haunting um, these towns. And it's also a very melancholy story. I mean, the characters are struggling or they're unhappy with their circumstances, almost like they feel trapped in this town or they're trapped in bad marriages or bad parents or, or, or you know all sorts of these things that that people fall into so it's very melancholy you know it's by no means an idealist or an idyllic view of small town mid, mid, mid-sized town life in america i mean the town it's not a rural town but 
it's by no means a metropolis or, any, or anything like that either. So it's kind of like one of these any town USA type type of um type of things. So there's that. Another big theme is I, mean, I kind of mentioned this earlier, like the nature of reality, and it really kind of get gets you thinking about that. I mean, as we get older, our sense of time changes and our sense of reality changes and the book is really good as far as dealing with kind of those more existential themes it, it gets into as well um there's really not any on they're, they're likable characters like there's nobody in the book that's necessarily likable maybe don the the writer character i mentioned earlier but and maybe a few others but but the characters aren't necessarily unlikable and strub really lets us get to know the characters like a lot of them at first like you might not care for or we might be quick to judge some of these people but you know we spend time with them and we learn about their motivations and why they are the way they are and we, we come to maybe not like them but we at least come to understand where where they're coming from and so the, the characterization is is really strong in in the, in the book as well. It's also a very meta type of horror book where the, the horror tropes in the story are just as much commenting on horror tropes as they are devices in, in the story to, to move the plot along. So it's, it's very meta. I mean, if you're someone who really likes Gothic horror stories, ghost stories, which is a, part, a big part of American literature. There's a lot of references in here and, and you're, and you're going to um, appreciate it where it, it has this old timey feel, but also feels modern at, at the same time. So, so in that sense, um, ghost story is effective. Um, if I have any criticisms of the book, maybe it is quite long, you know, it does, it, you know, the length could dissuade people away. And, and, but overall, there's not, still, there's not much fat in it. Like, I never felt like any section felt tacked on. It all felt, it all felt like it came together, especially the climax at the end, a novel this size. And sometimes you can, or you can get disappointed if you're reading a long book and the last 50, 100 pages are just sort of, um, fail to fail to live up to what the novel w was thinking you, you, it could be. But, but I wasn't disappointed in, in the climax of the novel. I thought it was, I thought it was clever. I thought some of the narrative techniques used were, were effective. The idea of how time is bent a little bit throughout there and I thought the ending was quite clever actually and was um, pleased where it went. It's an ending where there's still mystery. It, you kind of walk away from this book still thinking, well, did I just read what I thought I read or um, this? It leaves a lot of mystery. It leaves a lot to the imagination. Yet I think it gives us a, a satisfying readers gives a, a satisfying conclusion. To the novel as well so so that's a good book i think where you're you're still thinking about the mysteries of the story but we still get a, a sense of closure at at the end of um your story so lastly i'll mention it was adapted into a movie that came out in the early 80s shortly after the book's publication and i've seen the movie i, I own the blu-ray of the movie and it's it's a two hour movie and there's no way you can fit all the plots of this book into a two hour movie. It's simply not possible. So the movie certainly has the vibe of the novel a little bit. I'll, I'll give it that. But so much is cut out. So much is removed. It's really kind of boiled down to some of the, the essentials of, of the novel. But I know the movie wasn't well received, but I know it has its fans and maybe a movie that's up for some reevaluation. But, but I do think like the proper way to handle ghost story would be through 
like a mini series, limited series format, like a someone like Mike Flanagan who did the Haunting of Hill House series for for Netflix. I I could see someone like him being able to produce like a five six part series, but modernize it as well and maybe update some of the more aspects of the book that that don't quite hold up these days. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, it's not it's not a perfect book per se. I mean, there's some things that happen in here that you know, but but overall, it's it's really good. I'm glad I read it, and it it it's um, a great. Um, if you're a fan of Stephen King, it's definitely a book to 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 check out. So yeah, um, Ghost Story, Peter Straub. I'll leave it at that. One one last thing I should mention. Um, this, I've read The Talisman, which he wrote with King, but I've not read anything else he's written. So I am curious to see where he went with his career and as he continued writing until, well, Peter Straub passed away less than a year ago, last September. So so I'll definitely probably be, be reviewing some more, more of his books and in the future, but I'll leave it at that. Have a good day and I'll talk to you later.